I am ugly. I am good. But I'm also bad. And I think that all the traits that we think about, all the human traits, are actually good, bad, and ugly in different contexts and at different times. And let me explain. Once upon a time, there was a boy who was born to a family in the hills of Western Uganda. A few years later, in another part of Uganda, a girl was born to another family. They were born at a time of great change. A lot of the African countries were making the move to independence. And because of different circumstances, this young boy and this young girl found themselves in Nairobi during the swinging 70s. They met, they fell in love, and they got married at All Saints Cathedral. Eventually, they had three children, three girls, and I'm the first of the three. Now, imagine Nairobi in the 80s, when women were doing feminine things and being feminine women and aspiring to be good wives. There was a new trend in town, aerobics. Do you remember it? When women exercised, it was to the pulse of popular music wearing those bright colored leotards and leg warmers. Do you remember them? Men, on the other hand, they lifted weights and pumped iron. They did manly things. My mother was one of those women. She bounced and bounced and pulsed and pulsed, but that was not enough. The aerobics didn't satisfy her inherent craving for strength. So, my mother, in her leotards and her leg warmers, right? She went to where the men were, and she started lifting weights. And she was good at it. In fact, she often outlifted most of the men in the gym. <laughs> Fast forward 30 years later, and now my mother is facing the toughest fight of her life, cancer. And I have never seen anyone face that challenge with such determination, such courage, and such grit. Still at work, still in the gym five days a week. And if she had not pumped iron, lifted weights all those years ago, against the norms of the day, maybe her fight today would be very different. And all through my mother's manly pursuits, my father was grudgingly supportive. <laughs> grudgingly. I mean, which man wants to admit that his wife can probably <laughs> pick him up, right? <laughs> so, my parents, when we were growing up, we were three girls, they were very keen for us to be exposed to a lot of different experiences. They wanted us to have choices. And my mother's family had actually been kicked out of Uganda during the Amin regime. So my family used to make annual trips to the UK to visit our extended family. And because my parents wanted to foster independence in us, they sent us off to tra traveling internationally unaccompanied. The first time it happened, I was um, eight years old, and I was put in charge of my younger sisters. Filana must have been about four or five, and Melissa was turning three. And it was a British Airways flight from Nairobi to London. And I, I distinctly remember those blue and red pouches that you used to wear around your neck. Those of you who have been unaccompanied minors know them, huh? That's where you have your ticket and your passport. Now, my father had told me how a ticket and a passport are very important documents. So I kept my eyes on those blue and red pouches from Nairobi to London. 
I did not give them up to anybody who was not wearing a British Airways uniform. And the only other people who I was willing to give them up to were our relatives who were going to meet us at Heathrow on the other side. And to this day, if I was to leave my house suddenly, the first thing I will pick up is my passport. <laughs> we arrived safely. But um, on the way, on that journey, I was a very protective older sister, I am told. Uh, if one of us wanted to go to the washroom, we all went to the washroom. <laughs> and um, I, I, I kept my eye on them. I made sure they didn't wander away. Filana has a habit of wandering away. So always made sure that we were together and made sure that they didn't speak to the wrong people. Now, how I figured out who the wrong people were, I don't know, but I remember my dad must have told, given me a long talk before we went on the, got on the flight to tell me that they're the right people and they're the wrong people to talk to. I think I internalized that. I think even up to today, the right people to talk to, the wrong people to talk to, it's in there. So yeah, so we arrived, and as you can see, these are, these are all the experiences that make us who we are. So I grew up with a very strong mother, I've mentioned it, and she pursued activities that required strength. And so unsurprisingly, I have done the same. Now, I love strength training. I think that as a woman, strength training and lifting weights is very empowering. I think you can have a good job, you can be financially independent, you know, you can be doing it all on your own, but there's something about lifting weights that makes a woman feel powerful. I have lifted a man on my shoulders. He was a lawyer. <laughs> and put him on my shoulders and squatted. The, the gym was full of men at the time, and they were all silent, and they were in awe, and they counted my reps, 10. And the, the man who was on my shoulder, he was counting along too. And I placed him down. When I placed him down, I said, how do you feel? He said, slightly emasculated. <laughs> I have um, pushed my car for distances of about a kilometer. Yeah, I have up inclines, and I've even pulled it with my bare hands. And whenever, whenever I'm doing that, there are men who are standing watching, and they want to help, and they can't understand why there's another man, my trainer, sitting in the car <laughs> as I push and we say, I'm training, she's training. And they're like, mm-mm, turn on the engine. And we have to turn on the engine to prove that indeed I am training. And um, yeah, recently there was a man in the gym lifting, he was dead lifting, I think it was about 90, 90 kilos, about 100 kilos. And he's a strong man. And I, I had finished my workout and I think I'm a bit cheeky. Yeah? So I went up to him, I counted the weights. I'm like, oh, 90 kilos? And he said, yeah. I said, deadlift? Those of you who know what a deadlift is. He looked at me and scared, what does this look like? Yeah. So I was like, okay. I went behind it, bent over, deadlift. And so he sort of looked at me and I put it down and I walked away. <laughs> deadlift. <laughs> so, you know, these are, these are the experiences. I think these are experiences that make us who we are. And how do, they, how do they affect us? I think they affect us positively. They make us into self-assured, strong people, which is a good thing, isn't it? It is. It's a good thing. Unless society calls a self-assured young girl bossy, and yet calls a boy with the same characteristics assertive. This narrative, it follows us into the workplace. Women who are self-assured and knowledgeable. 
not afraid of authority. Women who are adept at pushing their agenda are often seen as a threat and termed as aggressive. So, I've told you I grew up with a strong mother. I push cars, I lift men. <laughs> so, you can imagine me in the workplace. I, when I went into the, into the workplace, I, I, a trait that I have, which is a questioning trait, could be the science. I ask a lot of questions all the time. And because of this, I have often been told I'm smart. That's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. But I've also been told I'm too assertive. That's a bad thing. And I remember, as a young manager, I was in a meeting, and I was, I was being Cleopatra. I was asking a lot of questions, as usual. And it was the type of meeting where you're not meant to be asking a lot of questions. And at some point, I think that my director got fed up. But they are innocent questions. I'm asking questions. I want to know why. And my director asked me, is there anything that you're afraid of? Oh. That could be an innocent question. Yeah? Or perhaps it could be a thinly veiled threat. Possibly? Probably? And so, from somewhere deep inside, from the strength and the wisdom of my parents, and the self-assurance and bossiness that I had been labeled with. I looked my director straight in the eye, and I chuckled. Afraid? Of course I'm afraid of things. But only those things that it makes sense to fear. And we stared at each other. The room was silent. Could have heard a pin drop. I was not the first to look away. So, remember. The good can be bad, and the bad can be great, and even the ugly can sometimes be exquisitely beautiful. The wisdom in life is knowing what your good is, what your bad is, and what your ugly is. Knowing when to shut them down and when to let them fly. <laughs>